Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Alan, Alan Moran. I work for a company named Altoros, uh, and I've been working in Cloud Foundry for the past two years. Today, I will be delivering to you a talk uh, that was prepared by my friend Alexander Lomov. Unfortunately, he couldn't travel today. So today, we will talk about managing multiple clouds with only one Bosch installation. Uh, we will particularly tackle two questions here, how we could manage uh, uh, Bosch deployments on, on a single on multiple regions, and how we can manage Bosch deployments on multiple clouds. So let me say a few, a few words about Altoros. Uh, Altoros is a consultant company. Uh, we provide solutions from the Cloud Foundry ecosystem to our clients. Um, we are in various locations uh, around the world. So how we started working on this? Well, a client came to us, uh, a health service provider came to us, that we've been working for them, and they wanted Cloud Foundry. But they wanted to have Cloud Foundry all around the states, and they wanted to be able to spin these clusters on demand. And that was not the only concern that we had. Uh, they, all they also wanted us uh, to, to be able to deploy those cloud foundries um, on multiple infrastructures. So we said, OK, we'll look into this problem. Uh, the community has been working on, on similar problems. We'll, we'll look and we'll start working on a proof of concept in our own data centers. We have offices in Minsk and a cloud provider in Minsk and a cloud provider in the States. So we said, okay, let's start working on a proof of concept. Um, but why? Why we would want, in the first place, having multiple cloud deployments? Uh, we, which would be the, the reasons that we, we would want that? Well, to start with, uh, we would we want to be as close as possible to our clients, right? We want to be as close as possible to the user. We want to have our cluster physically close to them. In this way, uh, we will have better response time, less latency, less probability of uh, package losses. And having multiple clusters also will bring us a system with fault tolerance. But w let's think for a minute. What about Cloud Foundry? How Cloud Foundry works over one? When there are serial issues, like Cloud Foundry is not prepared to work over one out of the box. I would just mention a couple of them. For example, the UAI Cloud Controller. For those who do, don't know what I'm talking about, the UAI Cloud Controller are two components of Cloud Foundry. The UAI that manages the users and authentications and role, uh, the Cloud Controller, which is basically manages all the rest <laughs> from apps, services, spaces, org, everything. And these two components uh, persist data on SQL solutions, such as MySQL and Postgres. Now, if we if we want to if we would want a, a cloud foundry deploy on multiple clouds, we will have to to make this component uh, this uh, cloud uh, this SQL solution to work over one. So that's the first problem that we will have. And another pr a problem that I can mention is NATs. For the ones who haven't heard about this component first, this is the component that allows all the internal communications that happen uh, within Cloud Foundry. And the problem of this is uh, that that is not optimized to work over one. Uh, and that's, uh, each node of NATS no knows about a group of nodes of other nodes, and, and it, it's just not prepared to work over one. So if we want to take risk and we find a solution that of a SQL database such as RDS that actually would work on different regions or, or or distributed uh, in a distributed way over one, uh, we will say, okay, let's try to do the deployment. We will, the first problems that we will we'll find will be the internal communication uh, between the components. We will write in into timeouts, right? Uh, for example, we will have uh, unpredictable things happening, right? Um, we could lose packages such as Herbits and an an app could be relaunched or y our and the app staging process could be uh, could could have problems too. So, 
we went uh, we went forward and said, okay, the solution would be to to replicate the same cloud fund installations on each of the regions or clouds that we will be. Together with this, uh, we would use a GeoDNS. In this way, we would distribute the load between the different clusters uh, and make sure that the closest cluster responds to the closest client. And then we will leave the, the app deployment process to be distributed on all our clusters. Then the app developers will need to find a way of their apps to actually work over one uh, if, if they need any storage solution at all, but, but this will be the data that we'll tackle. And to apply this solution, that this is what the community and we personally at Altoros have been doing so far, uh, whenever we have multiple clusters, we always need at least one Bosch installation in each of the regions or each of the clouds that we are at. So we, we started thinking of possibilities. We started thinking how hard it would be. We, we know th how Bosch works behind. How hard it would be to do some changes on Bosch and be able to, to spin up multiple clusters from only one Bosch installation. Um, why we would want to do this? Well, this client in particular wanted to have uh, different clients spin up on the band. Uh, and it would be le less, uh, less harsh for us to have all the synchronization in one cluster. And also it would save us DevOps time and resources in particular because we will have only one Bosch. I would prefer personally as an engineer to have a really robust Bosch installation instead of having uh, multiple installations on each of the regions. So we went ahead and we said, okay, let's, let's first start this proof of concept internally and, and see if we, we, we managed to do it. So how how we did it? Well, first to, to understand how we did that, we start, I will explain briefly how Bosch interacts with the different cloud providers and show the different changes that we had to perform for, for Bosch to, to be able to, to do this. To simplify the scenario, Whenever we do a deployment or we update the deployment, we have three, three main inputs. One is the release that is basically the recipes, everything that we need to run our software. We have a, a manifest, which is a, a descriptive file that, that describes the properties and the desired state of our cluster. Uh, we have a stencil, which is an image that is prepared to run on this particular uh, provider that we are working with, and also holds a piece of software that will let Bosch later communicate with these this VMs that we get created on, on our cloud. So these inputs arrive to the director. The director is uh, responsible for orchestrating all deployments in Bosch and all updates on the whole life cycle of our deployments. The director talks with the CPI, and the CPI is a particular component that is developed one per cloud, and it makes, it lets Bosch be agnostic to the cloud that we are. And finally, we have the cloud API, that this would be like the AWS API or the OpenStack API that we're actually talking to. Now, for being able to, for, for Bosch being able to uh, work w asynchronously with deployments on multiple clouds, we needed to do some changes on Bosch Director. So they can hold in, uh, in one instance of the Bosch Director, it could hold, it could work with different CPIs uh, at the same time. That was the first change that we needed to do. Then we needed to address the inputs. We have three different inputs here, which are the release, the manifest and stem cell, but unfortunately only one is cloud agnostic. The release is the only input from our system that is cloud agnostic. The manifest uh, holds information about the cloud, and the stem cell is, is also related with a particular cloud provider. So let's start by addressing the manifest. There's luckily, there's a, a, we didn't have to do much work because on, on recent release of Bosch, there's a cloud config feature when we can extract all the cloud-related information uh, and put it on a separate file. 
this is how it will look. Uh, this is an example of how the cloud config file will look like. And together with this feature, they distributed uh, on the CLI the options to be able to set and output the what we are actually have in that file. So we have our first problem address. We would separate uh, the, the hopefully all the cloud-related information about our manifest in different cloud configs, one per each of our infrastructures. Uh, we will now we still need to address the problem of stem cell. This is not actually a problem if we w if we would do a serial deployment. We will first work with one cloud, then with other. But working on multiple clouds, we would need to have a reference to it. So to understand how how this stem cell gets to the cloud API, I will describe this process briefly. Bosch Director sends the image file to the CPI. Now the CPI is responsible of talking with the cloud provider. Here the CPI sends the, the file of the image that we have to, to the, the cloud API. And in response from the cloud API, it gets a reference, a, graf a reference in the domain of the cloud provider that then later Bosch would use to spin up machines. So then this, this reference ID came comes back to Bosch and is stored in Bosch Director database. To be able to perform this, we we did some changes. We we able to be able to tag the the open stack, the, the different stem cells that we we want to to get to the system. So we use this cloud tag in this example to to tag the different clouds that we're going to work with. Or in the in the current situation, we could do this serial. Like we could just update the cloud configs and upload the different stem cells so that Bosch makes the different changes between the different CPIs that it needs to talk with each of the cloud providers. So let's make a quick recap. Uh, we have everything ready, right? We have the manifest uh, ready. We have the different cloud configs. We have the stem cell. Uh, we have the release probably upload or ready to Bosch. We have everything ready to do the deployment or an update with Bosch. So uh, we will go briefly through the process of how this works and which are the modifications that we needed to do to support these multiple clouds. The first two processes that happen are the binding deployment process and the, crea and the plan creation process. During this process, uh, Bosch receives a manifest and it links all with what it knows that it has in the database. It finds the deltas between the desired state and the actual state. For example, like the amount of machines that are actually created, see if the, the jobs that I'm planning to deploy are the same amount, and finds the deltas. And while doing this, it creates a deployment plan. So we have one problem here. How we can do the binding for, for, multiple, uh, for multiple clouds? So for this, we had to actually do some modifications in Bosch and, and support a new entity, which is cloud. This is the database model of Bosch, and we added the cloud entity here. Next part, package compilation. For those who don't know what happens here, uh, it basically grabs a package that hasn't been compiled for a particular stem cell and on a particular cloud provider, and it compiles this package. Let's go through the process briefly to see what, what happened behind. So Boss Director talks with CPI, CPI talks with the Cloud API, and they create a VM. This VM will, is used with the stem cell that was previously uploaded, and it will compile the packages from our release. This package is la later gets sent back to Blobstore. So they get download from Blobstore, pre-compile, and then get upload to Blobstore, compile now. So the next problem. 
w how we make these blobs are accessible from multiple providers that deploy maybe in many regions and all around the world? Well, there are a couple of options that we analyze. We could have like separate blob source and sync them. We could have separate blob source and compile on each of the blob source only what is related to its own cloud, right? We could use an external block for public and everyone could point to that one. Um, or we could use what, what we did actually as, as our solution, which is use the current, the current blob store and establish VPN connections from where we have our main Bosch server to all the other clouds. So the last problem, creating jobs in YAM. Let's see what happens here. Well, when we create a VM, we first turn some agent settings that this will be, we will put inside the VM, and the stem cell ID. And the CPI later talks with the Cloud API and creates uh, this VM. In return for the Cloud API, uh, we get some information about this VM. Like, for example, IP, so we know where we actually need to look for it. Now, CPI sends somehow, depending on, on which on the different clouds, some initial configuration, initial settings to that VM through the cloud API. The VM and the Bosch agent, which is like a piece of software that lets that VM talk with, with the Bosch installation, receive these this initial settings and from it are able to talk back with Bosch. And they do, they do this through NATS. NATS is back in the picture here. Now it's in the context of Bosch. So we will have only one NATS or, uh, or maybe highly available deployed, but they will be on our own installation of Bosch. We need to make NATS accessible somehow or be able to perform these processes at least. Then we, with NATS, uh, then it, it, go, it goes, with NATS it receives back the information on what it needs to run, right? The, the VM, uh, it's identified and it's assigned of a, a resource pool and it, it brings all the packages and shops that we run to start the actual system, the actual deploy that we're performing or update. So again, we have this problem. What, what we do with NATS, how we establish this communication being on multiple clouds. So there are two options here. There's um, the HTTP messaging bus, which is one option that doesn't use NATS, which is the one that you apply when you deploy a micro Bosch or when you do a cloud init. Or the second option that you have is establishing a VPN connection. And uh, this is the one we took. It's similar of what we did with the Blobster solution. We establish a VPN connection from each of the clouds providers that were connecting to our main Bosch installation. So this is a picture of how it works. We have a VPN center, uh, we have a VPN server on the data center that is connecting to our main Bosch. Now to recap, we we prove and and we, we finally got it working. Uh, our two, uh, our two, two data centers, one open stack on Minsk, uh, one AWS deployment of Cloud Foundry on the States, working with one single Bosch deployment that was, per, that was deployed on, on Minsk. We got this working. And unfortunately, I don't have time for demo because this process takes a long time. But this week we will be releasing a blog post. We are looking forward to, to work with the Bosch team and see if this is of any interest to introduce to the main branch. And uh, in the blog store that please check this, this website during this week, there will be a video of how this is actually working on our clusters. Furthermore, we will work on, on applying this solution for our, the client that we've been working for.
And finally, let me uh, say some words about Bosch. We we proved that Bosch is extensible. We proved that that Bosch is a it's a powerful tool and it's easy to work with. Um, we are really thankful to the Bosch team for, for making such a great tool. And again, thanks to Lomov. And are there any questions you guys might have about this plan? Yes. Well, Right, no, the, you mean what do you ask in, in particular? How do I keep apps in sync? Well, we haven't implemented a solution for that, but we could do, we could work on a, on a plugin and just make sure that, that it manages the different reference to the different uh, cloud foundries. Then on different, uh, on my experience, uh, the, the, the problem is, is itself how the apps would, would work on multiple clouds, right? Which, if they need to search any, any type of data. Yes? How do you manage the. Yeah. Well, that's uh, more on the developer side, like how how you will develop your app. First of all, you will have to find you will have to find solutions that work over one. If you want to have sync your 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 data layer or at that level, then it depends which type of apps we are working uh, we are working with, right? Oh, you mean like how how do how this wor actually works in what regards to latency these VPN connections that we establish? Well, at least we are still making tests on on how does it work in what regards to the life cycle of the deployment uh, using features such as the resurrector. Uh, we haven't worked on these things yet, and we we are still testing this. Uh, again, this is a proof of concept, but but we we. At least the latency is enough for for us being able to do perform a deployment. Let's say. Yes. Yeah, actually, we did consider using, uh, which is when this path because we we implemented already the the VPN solution for NATs. So we said, okay, let's just we have it there, and we just apply it. But but yeah. Yes. So you're saying the question is how do we manage data isolation from the upside yes. in different clusters? This is correct? Well, that depends if you really want data isolation. That depends of how you, how you want each of the clusters to to work. If you want like uh, always same clients will address through GeoDNS to the same clusters if they are located in the same place, but if they move around, they they might be addressed to a different cluster. So that I don't know if you dep that's again that depends uh, of the use case that you're working with if you need data isolation at all. Yeah. Yes. I uh, well, I am actually I haven't worked much on the implementation, uh, unfortunately. But uh, what we did is uh, add on the domain of of the Bosch uh, database uh, a new entity which is cloud, so that we can reference to that one. If I we have a way to speed up our orchestration process, well. No, but by having only one Bosch, it's already speed up this feature that our client wants in the very beginning, which is having clouds on demand. Having one Bosch, it's, it's, we don't need to go there, they spin up a bo micro Bosch, spin up a Bosch, and then do our deployment, which is have. Yeah. 
No, there there's no no constraints in what regards to scaling as long as your Bosch has still has connection and you still have resources in your in your cloud provider, you're uh, we have only done simultaneously and asynchronously deploy uh, on, on two clusters of OpenStack and AWS. That's what we have done so far. We haven't done further tests. Yeah. Oh, well, that's, yeah, no, we haven't worked in, in, in any of those, but uh, the GeoDNS, if, if it's, uh, it will redirect to the other IPs if it's down. Yeah. You yeah. Uh, I, I understand what you mean. Well, if if any of the clusters fail, then there will be the others providing at this point. Sure. Um, we haven't made a solution for that yet. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the cloud config. Yeah, we talk about that. It's actually a feature that we, we make use of, and it's all one of the our issues, actually. It's, it's great. Are there any other questions? Yes. I didn't hear what to say, sorry. <laughs> Not yet. We are we are we are we are planning on, on doing it in the next week or two. We wanna we wanna put this public and we'll be together with the blog spot that we are we that Lomov is finishing working on. Together there there will be a a, a video demo that, that shows all the different uh, customizations that we did in Bosch Cli to interact with clouds and yeah, it will be all, all the information will be there this week. Okay, thank you very much.